today's video is about carbon. And it's a topic that I don't think everyone understands, so I thought I'd just spell it out and kind of take out some of the mystery. Because people say, you should use carbon in your aquarium, but they... I have seen people that just put some in a filter sock. I've seen others that have put a whole bunch in a bag. I've seen people think it'll last forever when it really doesn't. And I want to kind of give you an example of how this all works. So here is a Next Reef reactor that can hold quite a bit. I mean, it could literally hold all the way to the top, but I don't need nearly that much. The general rule of carbon is half a cup per 50 gallons of water. So I have a 400 gallon system, we'll call it 450. I could use nine half cups or four cups, if you do your math, 4.5. And I will fill this up to this point here with granulated activated carbon. Now here's an example of mine, which you can kind of see. It's small little loose grains. There's a couple of different kinds of carbon on the market. Uh, granulated activated carbon or GAC, which again, I just showed you a second ago. Then the other kind, is pelletized carbon. And that kind of looks like rabbit droppings. And this kind here is for when you're worried that it's gonna flow through into something else. So you use a larger grade of carbon, you put it in the reactor, and it's less likely for it to escape and go into another section or in, into other media. How does this reactor work? Water flows through the center pipe, down to the bottom, out the holes in the bottom, through a perforated plate, there's a sponge, and then it goes through the carbon and up the top, and then it would exit out the top plate through a secondary port. So water goes in and water comes out. The water flowing through the center keeps the media from moving because it's going down a pipe and it can't be tumbling, it's not shaking it up, it's not pulverizing it and turning into dust. Now, the easiest way for me to fill this up is to use a funnel. And what I would do is set the funnel inside and then I grab a handy shot glass and I put that over the tube that is the center. And by doing that, I don't have a chance of the, or I, I prevent the carbon from going down inside that center tube. Instead, it's going down around the edges and I can lift the cup if I need to to get a little space and add all my carbon. I've already done that. So I'm already done with my funnel and my shot glass. Then I would put my sponge in place and then the perforated plate that goes on top. At this point, I would fill it up with some water. I've been using tap water, to be honest. I used to always use RODI water, but for this purpose, I'm just using tap water. And I fill it up about halfway and I shake it around and I hold my finger over the plate and I pour out the liquid. And then I refill it with water, shake it around, I pour out the liquid. I do this two or three times. And what this does is gets all the dust out of the carbon. So what's coming out is pure clean water without any dust that could leak into the system and affect some fish. Now that the reactor has been filled up with a proper amount of carbon, half a cup, per 50 gallons of water. So you do the math for whatever size your aquarium is. If you have a 100 gallon tank, you need one cup of carbon. If you have a 200 gallon tank, you need two cups of carbon and so forth. My tank has a 450 gallon liquid volume, including the sump and the anemone cube. So I have to have enough carbon for 450 gallons of water. And I've rinsed out my carbon so that it comes out clear. Then I would simply install the plate, which has an O-ring, keeps it from leaking. And this, this reactor will fit inside my sump. So I just tighten down all the screws and I can go ahead and install it in my system. Now, if you're installing something like this and it's bobbing up and down, you could add some water before you put it in your system. It could be RODI water, it could be salt water, just enough to weigh it down so it doesn't float when you stand it in the sump and connect the tubing to create circulation through it and into your system. Carbon is really good at clarifying the water. It takes out some organics, not a lot. The skimmer does more of that but it makes the water more clear. And that is what people compliment me on all the time. They say that your tank is so clear. How do you make your water look like that? Well, Starfire glass is a huge part of it. And if you have a regular tank with regular green glass, you won't get that clarity that I'm used to seeing. But when it comes to a tank that's made of Starfire, and that's the only type of aquarium I've used since 2004, you already get better clarity right out of the gate. Now I shot some video to show you the difference so you can see how this is reacting and how it's making the water look more clear day by day. So I'm going to hook it up today and I'm going to film it again tomorrow and the day after. And I'm going to show you how the water gets better and better each day. I hope that you find it interesting and you can understand how this works. And then finally, I want to point out that this stuff does not last forever. To be honest, in my opinion, it lasts a few days. And at that point, it's done. And you can leave it hooked up. I've done that. And what happens is when water's just sitting in carbon for a long time, it can actually become a nitrate bed and create nitrate. So it's almost best to just run your carbon polish the water, make it look good, and take this thing offline until you need to use it again, maybe in a month. And about once a month, run fresh carbon on your system just to kind of make the water look good again. 
yes, water changes work. And other things that you could put in the system to polish the water, like filter socks or filter pads, those are fine too. I don't use those myself. I prefer to use a skimmer, a refugium, carbon, and a calcium reactor. That's it. There's nothing else in my system. And there's nothing to trap anything. Now, I will tell you, if you put carbon inside a filter sock where the water is pouring down inside, it will pulverize it. And I just talked to someone recently who explained how his whole tank got black because the dust filtered right through the sock and went through the system, through the return pump, and into the tank and got black everywhere. So he was spending time cleaning out his reef. So don't put in a filter sock. I don't even like it in a mesh bag. That's another method that some use where they'll just fill up a bag, tie it off, and drop it in the sump. And that's called passive filtration. This method of running carbon through a reactor is called active filtration because it's running actively through the carbon. It's not able to pass around it. It's literally going in and out of the carbon. So I would recommend that you run it this way in your system. Now, if you have to hang it on the back of your tank, maybe a Fosban reactor would be good. But if you can fit one in your sump, I like these. I like this way better than a housing that's designed for an RODI system. And so I would recommend finding some type of brand that runs the water through the carbon actively and is designed to do that exact purpose. All right, this is an easy install. Just place it in the sump, try not to squish a fish. Hook up my output line. I don't even use hose clamps because it's in the sump and it just doesn't matter. And then open the valve. It looks like there was some trapped detritus in there. <laughs> Quite a bit. Alrighty, righty, we'll slow it down. Uh, that's the other thing I didn't mention before. I like the flow to come out of a carbon reactor very slowly. So how many gallons per hour? I would suggest something around, oh, 100 gallons an hour, 150, nothing fast, very slow. The carbon doesn't even need to move. You just need water moving through it regularly and not stopping. So that's pretty much it. And if you were to just leave this running nonstop for a long period of time, what would end up happening is your display tank would keep adding detritus. It would get trapped in the sponge. The sponge would get clogged. It would lift all the carbon to the top. It would finally get so clogged up nothing can pass through it. So there's really no reason to leave it running that long. So instead, just run it for a few days, get the system clean, and then you're done. If you can't do it this way, and you don't have a sump, you still have another option, and that's to use a canister filter. Fill the canister filter up with some floss, some carbon, and some floss. This is very old school, but it works really well. And you can just hook it up to your tank, to your nano system, let it purify the water for a few days, and then put it away for a month. All right, so this is good to go. We'll see how the tank looks in a couple of days, and I'll do an update, so that way we can see how it all came out. So here we are, day one. I had just cleaned the walls of the aquarium 15 minutes before the video, so quite a bit of stuff was blowing around, uh, which is food for the reef. Day two, the water's already more clear. You can see the other end, you can see that Vortec pump, and that's seven feet away. From the front, it already looks nice and clear to me. Uh, the left light is in 10K mode, so it's a little off-putting right now. And then on day four, the other end is pretty clear, even under this blue spectrum. Uh, still some little particulates blowing around, but that stuff doesn't bother me. And from the front of the tank, you don't see it at all. So here you are, about to see the tank in 20K mode. It's very glowy, but that's just the time of day I took the moment to film. My water clarity is very clear, and I'm glad that I used carbon. Okay, time for a channel update. And I think I really need your opinion. Well, <laughs> or I should just warn you. Maybe that's a better way of handling this. I have a huge video that's coming out. And here's a preview of a beautiful reef tank that's in Long Island. And it's 20,000 gallons, and it's been around for 15 years. And I filmed the heck out of it. Matter of fact, I got the person that takes care of that tank to answer a bunch of questions. And I hope that you will find it worth your time. I don't have any idea if you're willing to watch a one hour video or if you prefer them really short, but this tank has never been through a crash. It's absolutely gorgeous. The colonies are three and four feet across and he explains everything. And this is one of the MACNA speakers that goes each year to MACNA and does a presentation about reef keeping. And he is gonna answer those questions like what he's used to test, what is he using for flow? What is he doing about lighting? Does he like LEDs? 
Um, that's just a few of the things he talked about. And I am going to spend a lot of time editing this video for you guys, and I hope you'll enjoy it. There's some behind the scenes. There is a whole bunch of him talking about the tank, and I just filmed the tank so you could watch the livestock the whole time he's talking. And I hope that you'll have the time to watch it, and you'll enjoy it. Um, in other news, my reef is doing quite well. I'm happy with it. And um, I'm about to install that skimmer that I talked about a few weeks ago and get that going. Uh, I'm going to put it through its paces. I'm going to run it with Phosphate RX to remove phosphate. I'm going to use it with um, Red Cyano RX to get rid of some cyano that's growing in my system and see how that skimmer cooperates. I'm just going to see how it operates in general normal too. And I'll give you guys a full review of that skimmer. I'm very excited to do so. I'm actually feeling bad that I haven't done it yet. But the problem is, is that everything I do like that, I have to spend the time filming it and explaining it to it at the same time. And so it makes it twice as long or three times as long than if I were to just take it, install it in the sump, turn it on, and then tell you what I think. I'd much rather kind of give you the ride of the whole process. And so it takes a little more time. So thank you for tuning in. Please uh, subscribe if you aren't a subscriber yet. Um, share this with others if you think it would help them, especially the carbon part, because I see some bad advice out there. And I hope that you'll continue to keep watching. Thank you.